Hey everyone, Heather Williams here with the California After School Network, and we are here for another fireside chat. Um, it's been a while, but we're excited to have you all join us for um, this great chat. And as always, um, I am joined by Michael Funk from the CDE Expanded Learning Division, um, and we have some really amazing special guests today. So we have the groups from um, Vallejo Unified, um, and they will be talking about their expanded learning program and their partnership um, with one of their key partners, Lead by Learning. And so we're excited to have you all share a little bit more about what you all have been up to. Um, but before we do that, we are going to give a few policy updates. Um, just a couple minutes, a lot has been moving in the last few weeks at the state level in terms of the state budget and um, trailer bills and legislation. And so we just wanna make sure we highlight some of those updates for you all and then we'll jump right into the conversation. And so um, just for those of you that have been following along, the May revise is uh, kind of a, a big deal in the California budget world. So that's when the governor releases his revision uh, of the budget for the upcoming fiscal year. And so that was released a couple of weeks ago. Um, lots of stuff in it and lots of challenges for the governor and Department of Finance and the legislature as they navigate billions of dollars in deficit. And fortunately for education, most of the education funding really has remained intact. And so all these investments that the governor and our legislature have put in place the last few years for education. They've really prioritized protecting those investments. And so just as we saw in January, um, now in May, those investments are really protected. So they've looked for other ways to find savings in the budget. And um, right now, still, as, um, as we're looking at the budget, it looks like all of our expanded le learning funding sources will continue to stay at the current level. So that's really good news for us. Um, other, you know, there's concern with the budget that there might be um, some cuts, but at this point, everything is continuing as, um, as currently funded. So that's really, really great news. And then the other kind of big thing that comes along with the major budget announcement is also budget trailer bills, and we've talked a little bit about these in past fireside chats, but these are the trailer bills or these lengthy bills that implement um, policies related to budget actions. And so uh, the kind of big ones we announced uh, back in January, there was a recovery or a, a proposal around attendance recovery. And if you want to learn more about that and get into the details of that, um, you can check out our previous fireside chats and some of the information on um, the CAN website, and that'll go through the details. But that proposal continues to move forward. We're still tracking that because, again, this proposal would leverage expanded learning programs, um, including ELOP, ACES, and 21st century programs, both um, the 21st century elementary metal program, as well as um, assets or high school programs. So these programs, uh, attendance recovery programs, if the proposal goes through, could happen in coordination with any of our expanded learning programs. So we're continuing to track that. Um, the major change from January to May at this point is just delaying the implementation of that proposal. So um, instead of looking at July 1st, 2024, which is right around the corner, um, it would now look at being um, introduced in July on July 1st, 2025, so that the department has time to release guidance before then, districts have time to figure it out before then. Um, and it is still in a proposal form, so it is not approved yet. It still has to work its way through the process. Uh, and then also some changes to ELOP are proposed in the most recent version of the trailer bill, just in terms of funding. Um, and how long school districts have to spend funding. And so for 22, um, 23, and 23, 24, um, districts need to, um, the proposal is to encumber funds by September 30th, 2024. Otherwise, those funds will be returned to the state. And then moving forward, um, basically, 
any, um, starting with 2324, any funds that are given out to LEAs for ELOP, they need to be expended by June 30th of the following year. Otherwise, those funds would be returned to the state. So again, this just clarifies, like, if you receive ELOP funds in 24-25, um, you would have 24-25 and 25-26 to expend them um, by the end of 25-26 if you haven't, those funds get returned to the state. So um, you're now kind of in a, like, use it or lose it um, is the proposal there. And there's also a proposal that districts would need to clearly um, declare their intent to run ELOP each year. And so identify that they're going to um, actually run an ELOP program. Mm -hmm. So those are the major updates for the trailer bill. There's a ton of other stuff, but those are kind of the big ticket items that impact expanded learning. Um, and Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you if you want to add on to that or share any other policy updates. Yeah, there's there's one minor tweak. Heather, you had mentioned uh, the trader bill says encumbered funds must funds must be encumbered by September 30th. It's actually expended. Yep. Encumbered funds from 22, 23, 23, 24. I mean, I'm sorry, 21, 22, 22, 23. Those apportionments uh, have to be encumbered or spent by June 30th, 2024, and then expended by September 30th. What that does is uh, gives a 90 day timeline, which in our FAQ, we had said the law is silent on on this, and that's the legislature's attempt to uh, uh, tighten that up a bit. And then um, I was looking that up real quick just to make sure I wasn't, I had it right. Did you mention that districts have to declare their intent? Yes. Okay, so the reason that's important is because, um, you know, the governor's office and the legislature really want this thing to work. And yet they uh, are, it is a reality that there are some districts that are choosing not to run the program or spend the money. And the legislature is asking for districts to state up front whether they intend to run the program or not. And then in layman's terms, what that means is if a district says we're not going to do it, then the state will recover the money right away as opposed to waiting that two-year period. Uh, so more in the weeds, but, you know, that's that's the big challenge. Um, one of the reasons why we bring outstanding leaders and programs on the fireside chat like we have today is because we want to inspire uh, people who maybe are reluctant. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they've never ran an expanded learning program. And the idea of um, what am I going to plan for nine hours on a non-school day? There's no bell. There's no curriculum. There's, you know, what do I do? So that's why I bring on these experts to inspire and lead. But uh, we really do need everyone to step up. And, are, you know, I'm not going to mince words. There are children that desperately need this program. There are families that desperately need the support that comes from this funding. And so with that, uh, Heather, I'll turn it back to you to bring up our guests. Right. Well, um, thanks, Michael. And like I said, we're very, very excited today to have um, Vallejo joining us and their partner. And so um, Carol has been around for a while now um, in the expanded learning world. And Carol, we're very excited to finally bring you on to you and um, folks from your team on to a fireside chat. And so would love to have you start with a bit of an introduction of yourself, um, your background in expanded learning and what you do right now um, and kind of the expanded learning program at Vallejo. And then we'll have your team introduce themselves as well. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Carol Lewis, and I am District Coordinator for Expanded Learning for Vallejo City Unified. 
Um, I've been in this position for 12 years, um, but I'm finishing my 27th year in education, um, started as a classroom teacher. Um, I just have to say, um, you know, following Michael's comments, that um, if there are districts that are concerned about what do I do with this money, um, there's just so much expertise in the field um, and so much inspiration in the field. And um, I would encourage anybody to reach out. Um, so I'm here with a couple of my teammates um, and I will, I will let them introduce themselves starting with Renee. Everybody, I'm Renee Collins. I'm one of the four assistant managers that help support um, 16 sites that Carol's over. Um, I was a site coordinator for seven years uh, before I became the um, assistant manager. And um, I was in all of the school districts and all of the Loma Vistas and Solanos. And I, I was born and raised in Vallejo. So I've been in this district for a very long time. <laughs> and, uh, and I've grown to love this district. And Eddie, go ahead, come off the mic, yeah, there we go. How's everybody doing? My name is Eddie Berrigan. Uh, I've been over Loma Vista for 17 years as a coordinator, after school coordinator. I started off as a GBRD rec leader from a rec leader to a senior rec. And the two coordinators that were here that had ran the program before me, they thought it was a good idea for me to take over so the following year after that, I took over here at Loma Vista, which is the school that I'm at, Loma Vista Elementary here in Vallejo. And I've been here 17 years, went to school here, and I came back, giving back to the community. So I'm back at the school that I came from. Back. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's an amazing, that is amazing, Eddie. And yeah. the fact you are site coordinator at that school for 17 years, that might be the world record. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know that if it's not, it's close. And what I think about, you know, cause when I was doing work in, in the Bay, uh, 20 years in San Francisco, we'd have site coordinators around for 10, 12, 13 years. And it makes a huge difference. You know, the kind of relationships you have and the trust and, you know, I want you to stay there until kids in the program start sending their kids to your program. Oh. It started. I, I, have started. Kids coming, I have kids coming back and working with me. The ones that have been here in the program are now here working the program for me. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love to hear that. And I was just on a webinar yesterday and someone was complaining about turnover in our field and how do you do anything with the turnover in our field? But you all just kind of highlighted, you don't have to have that level. I mean, there will always be some turnover somewhere, but we also have a lot of folks really dedicated um, to this right. work. So appreciate you all. And um also excited to learn about your partnership with Lead by Learning. So um, Leah, have, have you introduced yourself quickly and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, my name is Malia Tayabas Kim, and I'm the director of programs at Lead by Learning. We are a program of Mills College at Northeastern University. Um, before this job, we support professional learning at schools, districts like Vallejo City, um, but also nonprofits as well. And before this, I actually was a teacher, a second grade teacher in Oakland Unified at Garfield Elementary. Um, and Actually, what you said, something, Michael, earlier around like that children desperately need programs. And I was that child growing up. I grew up going to after school, being like one of the last children, you know, picked up um, because my parents needed the support. And so, you know, before I became a teacher, I actually was a fourth grade after school mentor with the East Bay Agency for Children. And that really solidify like I want to continue a future in education and working with kids. And so that's what brought me to become a school day teacher. And I have the privilege of working with these amazing folks in Vallejo Expanded Learning. We also work with OUSD Expanded Learning, so shout out to them. But it's been a pleasure and I've learned so much about Vallejo, the city in general, but also about the amazing work that they're doing with students. And so I feel lucky that I get to work with them. Well, you've got some good, some good documentation, some good articles on your website about the work with Vallejo, but 
you know, I let's not miss there. There's a correlation between the length of time that both Carol, Renee, and Eddie have been mm -hmm. in their work, and the intentionality of investing in workforce development. And what I when when Malia first, you know, talked, we first started talking about the fireside chat. She was talking about how some amazing stories about what kind of, what kind of things developed over time. And uh, we'd love to hear some of those stories about some of the magic behind this mm -hmm. intentionality and and what that looks like. Yeah, I actually think Renee. <laughs> has an amazing story. I think her story of being a site coordinator for many years and transitioning into this new role as assistant manager, she has this really great takeaway. So actually, Renee, I think you should share your story. <laughs> okay. Well, um, before I uh, Levi Learning came, I was a site coordinator for five years and then Levi Learning came. And um, before that, I kind of thought my program was like, set and ready to go. I didn't have to change anything. Every year I had the same stuff and was doing the same things. And I just kind of was like, oh, good. This is my program. This is going to be what it's going to be. And so um, when Levi Learning came, they're like, this is the place where you dig a little deeper, where you uh, try to figure out how your kids are feeling, how your parents are feeling, how to get the full perspective of your program and not just your view of it, Um, how to be like student led and parent led and community led. So um, when she came along, I started asking my kids, like, do you have, like my program? Like, what do you like about it? And they was like, yeah, no, <laughs> we don't like the fact that we've been doing the same stuff over and over again. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that caused me to start asking questions and uh, working with Lee by learning, asking them, you know, um, just, just general questions about what, it, what am I missing in my program that they actually love and they need. And actually in my first year, when Eddie came on, he had said something about how amazing community circles was. And they were complaining after COVID about, they just wanted a space where they could just sit down and talk to somebody and just kind of communicate how they felt and situations that they were going through personally. And Eddie had these amazing stories about his community circle. And I was like, oh, good, right, got it. <laughs> so let's just start the community circle. But then after I did that, I realized the boys didn't want to talk to the girls and the third graders didn't want to talk to the sixth graders. And then I had to figure out how to facilitate the right staff and make sure they knew how to facilitate those conversations. And then they started feeling uncomfortable. So it was a really long yearly process to where I was like, okay, this is my continuous quality improvement. <laughs> so um, this is what I, so I studied that for years and talking to Eddie and kind of looking at what he was doing and we kind of collaborated. And so I just got better and better. And now that was like, that's like one of the best programs at that site now, like community circle. They're like, when do we get down and sit down and talk? And, and so mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's an amazing experience to know that you're collaborating with somebody that's going to make you think deeper um, than where you are. And Levi Learning had done that for me year after year after year um, mm -hmm. to think outside the box, think about everybody else and how they feel about your program versus just me and how I want my program type of thing. So um, it was a huge eye opener and it still is because now that I'm transitioning to an assistant manager, I'm now trying to um, help coordinators see that side, that student led side, um, how to get so much out of our heads and try to figure out what's best for your site, for your students, for your parents, for your community and um, trying to get them to just look at different perspectives and go a little deeper. So um, that's my continuous quality improvement <laughs> that I'm in right now. Um, so Lead by Learning, uh, just to be clear, is not a program provider. Lead by Learning, you know, give us the, give us the uh, yeah. two or three cent pitch. Lee. Oh man, I love this. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think at its core, we believe that, you know, obviously students are at our center, at the center of everything, right? We want to be providing the best teaching, the best after school programs for our students. And the question is, you know, a lot of other programs focus on, you know, um, here, here's the curriculum. If you do this X, Y, and Z, this is going to solve all your problems. And what we really do is we want to support the adult learners to engage in learning in service for their students. And so we do that through inquiry. Um, and so kind of Renee's, you know, story illuminates a question that we always as an organization would turn back to, which is what is happening for my learners and how do I know? 
My learners as a principal could be my teachers, my staff. My learners as a site coordinator could be my students. It could be my staff, right? But how do you know that? And I think one of the biggest accomplishments so far with Vallejo is their understanding of what data is, you know, data information. And so I think Renee's story is how are you collecting that information around how students are actually experiencing your program? Because yeah. right now, Renee was leading off of her own assumptions. Students seem to be fine. They're doing the work. They're signing in. They're leaving school, right? And what her data revealed to her was actually they had a lot of suggestions of improvement on her program, right? And so it's situating the adults, not as someone who is the expert and knows everything, but actually as a learner. And so that's what we try to do in all our partnerships. Yep. Eddie, I'm wondering... You know, 17 years and experience before that. How do you stay fresh? The kids. It's always a new thing. Every single day is a new, it's a new perspective. You look at kids, they come at you differently. Uh, they keep you young for sure. So opportunities just to talk to the kids and what Renee was touching on about community circles. I call it the RJ. I started off as the RJ circle that touch bases on kids and trying to figure out their emotions and what they have going on because I went through the same things at that age. So I got a chance to really talk to the kids and be able to understand them a little better so they can understand me a little better. And it made everything so much easier to understand them because they understood me. So the trust became bigger and yeah, it just kept it going. And I didn't just enjoy it. It just kept me around here. Didn't want to leave. Like I could have left several times. I because I'm going to say this because of Carol, I'm going to say this again. <laughs> if it wasn't for Carol, it got to the point it got stagnant for me. And Carol brought new life by letting me know that whatever you do, just do it to the best of your ability and just push through. And she gave me the opportunity to do that over here at Loma Vista. And since she's been here, it's been flourishing. So kudos to Carol. Carol Lewis is by far a great support. Second that. <laughs> she's a rock star. And, and Eddie, RJ, restorative justice, correct? Yes, restorative Mr. justice. So yeah. I went, yeah, I went through a training, which was crazy a crazy story quick story for you guys so i wasn't supposed to be in this rj community circle thing that they had for the administrators for Leo. but my principal at that time i'm not going to say her name but she didn't want to go so she said go ahead Eddie, you can do it i'm like i'm not supposed to go to this she's like no i want you to go to this so i went to it and it touched me in a way that i would say i've never been i never felt this way when i went to talk to other people knowing that they had to go through the same thing that i've been through going through the same community that we all went basis off the color of our skin, what we had to go through growing up, even though they're older than me, we all went through the same type of drama, the same type of consequences of dealing with some type of any kind of a uh, racism. So by the end of this training, we are all crying in this circle talking about what we went through. So I went through three more trainings or two more trainings. Actually, I enjoyed it so much. I went through two more trainings of it. And then I implemented it over here at Loma Vista with the kids and that's how I got a chance to really touch bases with a lot of kids, understand where they're coming from, because we're coming from the same bases. So, yeah, great. It was uh, touching for me. Hard to imagine how many young babies have been transformed by uh, that experience, yeah. you know, transformed. Absolutely. Carol, appropriate kudos have gone to you in a couple different ways today. And... She didn't get my permission. She just announced that she's retiring after this year. I'm going to find out. I'm going to leverage the bureaucracy and figure out a way to block this. <laughs> well, I'm going to find some, going to find be, some red tape. There. I'm going to find some red tape and tape you in your place. What are, you, want, um, speak what are you most What are you most proud of, Carol? Oh, my gosh. What am I most proud of? I, I'm most proud of um this the staff that have developed over time and i've got i've got to tell the story of um so eddie thank you for you know, like the conversations we had when i first started of not understanding like what what do you mean you don't because we loma vista is right next to a farm and i'm like what do you mean you don't take the kids onto the farm for outdoor learning experiences and you know, just kind of my naivete and like, oh, well, let's make that happen. Um, but, you know, connecting it back to our work with Lead by Learning, um, Michael, I don't know if you recall, but after one of your um, early fireside chats, um, when we were just coming back from 
being on lockdown after COVID, I was feeling so discouraged. I saw the fireside chat, your sign off of, you know, lead with love, just like um, kind of opened things up for me emotionally. I picked up the phone and I called you to thank you for that. That was one of the lowest points of, of this work. Um, but it was also the same time that we started working with um, Lead by Learning, and I started see that seeing the potential of um, adult learning as a um, social process and a emotional process, and it kind of shifted my vision of leadership. You, when when you step into leadership in education, you know that you're not going to be impacting kids except through the people you lead and I think this staff responding to um, that shift in how we approach things has been um, the thing I'm most proud of and Renee you know when I first started with Lead by Learning they offer um, a an adult learning certificate that you can get earn a certificate and one of the things you do is you choose a focal learner and Renee was my focal learner. So I got a really close in set of conversations with her that year as she was going through these, um, the, the processes that she described earlier in the conversation. And that just um, was so rewarding to watch that, that growth and be part of those conversations a as a peer, not as a, um, evaluator or a manager but to really you know create that bond over inquiry about okay what does this mean this is what was said what does this mean you know what what does that imply for what I might do differently next time that was a really meaningful experience so um it's the relationships I'm most proud of Michael amen thank you Carol and um in a short amount of time, you all have highlighted so many things. And um, obviously at the CAN team, for anybody who knows us, this you all are like talking our language all about the adult learners and continuous improvement and, you know, um, collecting data, but data really to, um, sometimes we talk about these things as if they're these really complex processes that are really hard and removed, but it's, you have brought these in. So this is all in service of, of the humans, right? Like this is in service of the adults then ultimately in service of the kids um, and families we work with. And so just appreciate you all um, elevating all of those things, the importance of our students, our communities, but also how we support our adult learners. Um, and I think, you know, you all had um, programs in place prior to ELOP, prior to COVID, but um, I'm just wondering as we start to wrap up, and Carol, you kind of alluded to this at the start, right, ELOP brought a lot of money into our system and a lot of opportunities, but folks are still not quite sure what to do with it, and, you know, we know you could do a lot with it, and so if you had recommendations to folks um, similarly situated as you that, are like, well, I don't know, we, we're good, we don't, we're good. We don't know what to do with this extra money. Um, maybe one or two ideas of how, how they might expand, grow, build on what they've been doing um, to take it to the next level. I mean, Renee, you talked about that. You're like, oh, I'm good. And then realize, no, there's so much more I can, I can do. So maybe give folks some ideas of um, if they haven't figured out quite yet what to do with their funding, um, what they might invest in. And um, okay. yeah, Carol, I'll start with you. Um, I, th I think it really is about um, that notion of investing, right? So for me, a lot of the um, best use of funding is about um, expanding the horizons of the students. So I really look out to partnerships in the community for that and have brought in um, STEM learning and fine arts and um, uh, other type, Eddie, Looking. help me out here. There we go. We, I mean, our thing is whatever the kids want to learn, we feel like we can make some type of enrichment program around it. Like kids wanted to learn how to braid hair. So we 
created a hair, you know, club for them and put that in a structure type of way. So it's really all about moving with the times of the students, whatever they want to learn, um, just get with it. And there's always some, you know, a third party or somebody that's actually willing to teach the kids in the most structured way. So I think it's student led really. And many of our um, partners are in the community, nonprofits, um, so that would be definitely one piece of advice is to reach out to community partners. And then um, right now I'm in the middle of um, crafting a contract with Lead by Learning um, to have them continue their work beyond my tenure <laughs> for three years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so those are the kind of things. And then also, um, and I don't know if this is the environment which should bring this up, but um, infrastructure. Um, we're actually going to um, put in place at three of our uh, programs um, a expanded learning centers, um, Loma Vista being one of them. Um, you know, it's it's challenging. We know our schools serve every student that attends the school, right? So we know that, you know, 400, 500 kids attend that school. But when um, the end of the school day bell hits, suddenly we're shrunk down to one or two rooms for expanded learning. Um, so that's that's one way we're going to use um, some funds is to establish expanded learning centers that will be um, dedicated just to those programs at three of our school sites. So that's going really going to help us. Um, you know, Eddie will be able to set up a music class and not have to worry about breaking down the um, the pianos and carting them to storage every day at the end of piano class. And um, if you um, have been to Eddie's site, you know that those kids can really play piano. And we know that they would not have had opportunity to learn piano outside the context of our program, so. Amazing. Yeah. Carol, I, you almost sounded apologetic. Like, I don't know if I should bring this up here. <laughs> Uh, well, I know that was an issue at one of the. <laughs> well, but but let's so let's so let's just call, let's just call it out. It's an appropriate use of the money. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the reasons why the investment was made at the level it was. You know, we've got visited Folsom Cordova Unified with a whole bunch of folks several months ago, and they talked about how you know. There's some schools in these well-to-do neighborhoods that had pretty nice TK and K facilities, but there's schools in these other neighborhoods that are struggling that the facilities were horrible. So they invested their ELOP money into giving all kids top shelf stuff. That's an equity. That's exactly what we should do. Yeah. The only thing we say is if it's going to be used during the school day too, then figure out a cost share. Right. But the, the expenditure in itself is is to be applauded. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to be applauded, not just allowed, it's to be applauded. I'll be taking this clip to my uh, <laughs> assistant superintendent. So. <laughs> you, you please do. And uh, I get quoted a lot when I say things like that. <laughs> and sometimes it comes out just a bit differently than I said it. <laughs> but uh hey i i got a question before you take us home heather but if i come to vallejo to visit i want to see all of you how about that <laughs> i want to see i want to see loma vista absolutely come on through come on through <laughs> vip red carpet treatment come on by Eddie didn't say this, but he runs his program where based, a lot of the students are leading a lot of the clubs and they are taking these leadership roles on and he's been able to build that with him. So it's a really yeah. good one. Thanks for that. Yeah, I had a, mm -hmm. yeah, that's meant to lead off on something like that is uh, I had a, a young lady, a young, I would say lady, now she's a young lady, a young girl by the name of Destiny Ferreira. She started off as one of my RJs. And she just, we understood each other really well. And when she got into the eighth grade over here, she ended up, I, I challenged her. I said, can you lead a class for me? She said, uh, yeah, certainly. So she led a class of six kids, well, five at first. And I said, can you do six? He said, I'll do six, I'll do eight. 
So she just pre presented herself like I could do the challenge. So she's been with me since, ooh, I want to say close to about, how long, Destiny? <laughs> she's wor she's working here right now as my as my photography teacher. She's my so a, photography teacher. A, so bring her on. <laughs> Yeah. Let's say, let's say uh, hi. Come here, Destiny. Well, let's say come here, hi. Destiny. <laughs> she's amazing. Destiny, I mean, I gotta say she did some amazing work over here. She's been a little one and now she's <laughs> Destiny. Destiny right here. Hey Destiny. Hi guys. <laughs> yeah, so, so you... she's been through it too, over here. How do you, how do you like working in the program? I love it. I like what I'm able to do. Eddie allows me to have the creative space to lead the class in the direction that I want to lead it in. And then my students like it a lot too, because my class is pretty popular. Not, <laughs> not to boast or nothing. And, and what is your what is your class? I teach the film and photography class. So since we have our classes broken up into um, two months, the first month is normally like photography. So the kids know how to, they learn to work with the camera. And then the last month um, I let them come up with the project to, um, make a video or a little movie and they film it and edit it themselves. Destiny? Yes, sir. You are the reason. You, Destiny, is the reason that the governor put $4 billion in the budget. <laughs> Your story. <laughs> it's, it's, it's this story mm -hmm. that is what this is all about. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you for all you nice do. to meet you. Yeah. You don't know who I am, but it's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. It's okay. <laughs> well, Michael, I think that is probably the perfect story to end our fireside chat on today. And it's just a perfect example of the work you're doing, why we're doing this work, why the governor has invested so much money into expanded learning. Um, and so... I just want to say a huge, huge appreciation mm -hmm. to all of you for the work you do and your commitment um, to your students and your communities and, and your staff. And um, it makes a big difference. And um, we we love spending this time with folks like you all and seeing the work that you're doing and being able to share it with others. So definitely um, from me, a huge thank you for joining us today and sharing your stories. And Michael, I'll uh, send it over to you for last words. I got an email from someone earlier today saying I'd asked for some, they wrote this long email of all the great things happening at their site. And in their tagline, the very bottom line was lead with love in quotes. And it said, Michael Funk. Yes. It's catching on. Yeah, it is. I would say, quote, lead with love, Vallejo Unified. Unified School District. Thank you for leading with love. Lead by learning. Thank you for, we've been down the Compassionate Systems Trail together, and there's so much heart in your work and so much heart in Vallejo Unified. Thank you for leading with love. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, everyone.